All right, today I'm going to highlight the simple, what I call the simple uh, circuit board uh, for the Super Nintendo. This is um, uh, for games that don't use SRAM. So if your game requires a battery or any kind of save data, then this is not the one you want to use. So uh, this circuit board has... Um, couple of different features so so if you're going to use any of these ROM sizes uh, the 32 megabit 16 megabit 8 megabit that are 42 pin say 27 C 800 is a 40 uh, it's either 40 or 42 pin device um, but almost everybody uses 160 or 322 so if so for games that don't save, to use this board, um, you would uh, check your appropriate ROM size. So let me see if I can zoom in on that here. So you got your ROM size selection, and then there's a little jumper over here on the right that says "Use this ROM." So you have to. You have to solder bridge that little point there. And then this next point is uh, high and low mapping. So if your game is low mapped, you would bridge that point. Uh, if it's high mapped, you don't do anything. You just leave it alone. Now this spot right here where you see the, um, the three holes in this one, these three holes are for like a mechanical switch that you could put there. So. I put that there just for um, developmental, you know, if you're going to use it as a tester where, you know, you're going to be switching back and forth and you don't want to have to whip out the soldering iron every time. And so, but anyways, but it's not used, um, you know, there's no switch included. Um, this is just, you know, if your game is low mapped, you bridge that. If it's high, you don't. That's about it. So... So whatever game you're making, whether it's high or low mapped, no SRAM of course, um, you would just you would choose your ROM size. You would bridge this point to use this ROM, and then if it's high or low, you you know jumper accordingly. Now on the back side, if you're going to use a 32 pin, oops. Um, if you're going to use a 32-pin device, like a 27C080, then you would bridge this point where it says, it's upside down, where it says uh, bridge for this ROM. So if you're going to use the 32-pin ROM for here, the, it goes on. It goes on this side of the board. And you just bridge that point there. And then the only other thing you do is if your game is high or low, then you would, you know, bridge that point there. So for a single game, that's all you have to do. If you're going to use this ROM, you have to bridge that point and then select if it's high or low. If you're going to use a 42-pin ROM, um, then you select your ROM size got to bridge that point where it says use this ROM and then choose your mapper high or low and that is that is pretty much it for this board it's pretty simple it's got a lot of text on here for some other things that that it can do I'll go over that in a little bit so um, I have a couple of examples here this is uh, King of Demons as you can see, I bridged use this ROM. It is a low mapped game, so I've got the low map soldered. And it is a uh, 27C160, so I've got the left left side bridged. You can see the ROM where it says 27C160. And so um, I'll go ahead and pop this in. So 
This one takes longer to start than others, so... And that is normal for this game. So, um, and then I'll show you an example of using uh, the ROM, and the, you know, the smaller ROM. Now this is actually a 27C040 ROM, so it's smaller. This is actually a 512K and not a 1 megabyte like the 080 is. So nothing's different as far as uh, which bridges you're going to do. But if you're going to use an 040 EEPROM, then you have to cut pin 1. Okay, that's only if you use the 512K, the 040 EEPROM. If you're using an 080, then nothing, you just solder it in like normal. And so, so but I wanted to show you an example of using an 040 because there are quite a few uh, Nintendo games that are smaller than one megabit, or excuse me, one megabyte, and... Um, so anyway, so you can use the 040 as well. Now, uh, part of this design is um, you can make this uh, kind of a multi-game. And it's kind of limited on what you can do, and I imagine most people are not going to want multi-game feature to begin with. But um, but it'll look, I go over this just so it explain what what some of this text is for. So this board is capable of of um, two, three, and four games as multi-games so long as they're contained in one ROM, most likely the, the 322 ROM. But um, So this is a microcontroller and then this these little points here, A and B those select which functions that the microcontroller is going to do. So, if right here where it says uh, if you do bridge just A, then it's two games, you know, into a 27, 3, 20, 22. Uh, B is four games, so that'd be four one megabit game or one megabyte games. Um, and then A plus B is if you're using a 27C160 for a two-game multi-game. So that'd be you know, two times one megabyte. And then the last one, if you don't bridge any of them, then um, it'll do three games in one. Uh, one megabyte, one megabyte, and then a two megabyte in size. And then this little chart here tells you how the mappings go. So, um, I mean, most of the small games are low mapped anyways, but there's a few that are high mapped. And so, uh, we're just so if you have a, a four game multi game and you need one of your games is low mapped and then the other three are high mapped, then you would select, you know, jumper number one. Uh, if they're all low mapped, then you just go up here and just click all low um, and so on so if you have a two game multi game you know the first game could be low or it could be high or or high low etc so that that's just kind of how this chart works and um, again it's I really don't expect the multi game part of this board to be that attractive to a lot of people but but you know it does help explain what all that's for and so so anyway um, so this is um, I think this one is two multi games so I'll just show you real quick they're reset based so you have to hold the reset button now this game is a 27 C 160 or the ROM is and the two games are are the two different battle toads which are both one megabyte in size each and so, 
So this is Battletoads, and then if I hold the reset button for one, two, three seconds, then it switches to the other game. So, so in a nutshell, that's, that's what the microcontroller does. Without the microcontroller, then um, it's just a single game. And, you know, it's, I already covered that earlier with um, how easy it is to make. So if you do use the microcontroller, and I'll just say this only because I'm covering it now, but if you do use the microcontroller, you must remove these two resistors. And it says, must remove R5 and R6 for multi-game. So if you're doing a multi-game, you got to take these two off. They're real small. Your, your soldering iron, you just put some heat to them and they'll just slide right off. So, but uh, that's, that's pretty much it. That's just a recap, you know, if you're going to make a, a single game, like Pocky and Rocky or King of Demons or Demon's Crest or Castlevania X, uh, and there's a, a whole host of, of games that don't use SRAM. So just to recap, you, you do your um, your ROM size jumper. You just tell the, the board basically you're going to use this ROM, so that's why you jumper the spot. And then if it's high or low, you, you either do or don't jumper that one. And that's it. And if, you use, if you're going to make a game like Wild Guns or... You know, one that's one megabyte or smaller, like um, Battletoads and one of the Teenage Turtle games. You know, you can, you can use a 27C080 and put it here and do the jumper where it, so it'll tell the board to, to use this ROM. And that's it. You're done. So this is the um, quote-unquote simple simple board for games that don't use SRAM. So, if you have any questions, feel free to um, message me.